Episode 4 This episode begins with the bully fangirling over Fu Hung, the Empress's brother. Yingluo warns her not to indulge in wishful thinking. In the royal palace, people like them are not qualified to be with those noble men from privileged families. The bully then angrily leaves. Unexpectedly, Yingluo bumps into Fu Hung. Fu Hung hears everything Yingluo says earlier, and she quickly explains that not all men are unworthy of trust. Fu Hung warns her not to underestimate men, regardless of her biases against them. Fu Heng goes to the Empress's palace to visit his sister, the Empress. He sees her looking at the longevity lock again, and immediately snatches it away, throwing it into the bushes outside. The Empress rushes out as if she has gone mad, wanting to retrieve her longevity lock. Fu Heng holds her back and tells her that it has already been three years since the second prince passed away. During these three years, she has been depressed. Fu Heng advises that she shouldn't forget her duties as an empress. The empress then cries and asks him, how can they accuse her like this? The second prince was the child she carried for nine months, her most important person. She knows that Fu Heng is here because the emperor has asked him to come. She wants Fu Heng to tell the emperor that he can remain indifferent, but she can't. Except for the five days of extreme grief after the second prince's death, the emperor acts as if the second son never existed. He could have other sons, but she doesn't. She only has him as her son. After saying this, she begins searching for her longevity lock again. Fu Heng understands the empress's sorrow, but there are other things to be discussed. He begins talking about their mother, who cries frequently as she worries about her daughter, the empress. Before leaving, Fu Heng leaves the box entrusted to him by the emperor for the empress, asking her to open it once her mood has calmed down. Later, we see Consort Chun appearing for the first time. She goes to pay her respects to the empress and informs her that one of the maids in the inner palace has reached the age of 25, the age at which she can leave the palace. The maid is anxious to be released soon to get married, but doesn't want to disturb the empress knowing her troubled state of mind. The Empress hurriedly instructs Mingyu to arrange a dowry for the maid, wanting her to have a splendid wedding. After this incident, the Empress finally understands her own negligence. Such a thing happens in her palace, and there are surely more matters in the vast palace that require her attention. Consort Chun also relays Fu Heng's message, urging the Empress to open the box, which might help her find solace. After opening the box, the Empress takes out the memorial inside. It reveals that in the first year of the Emperor's reign, he had already secretly designated the second prince as the crown prince. He has high hopes for the second prince. The Empress initially thinks that she is the only one who loves her son, the second prince. She has been living in grief, believing that his death is due to her negligence. After finding out that the Emperor also loved their son deeply, the Empress finds peace and regains her composure. Later, all the concubines in the palace go to pay their respects to the Empress, who informs them that she is now in good health and will handle the matters of the harem properly. Noble consort Gao, however, continues to oppose the Empress. But this time, the Empress doesn't ignore her as before. Instead, she directly points out and suppresses noble consort Gao's arrogance. Consort Xian and consort Chun return to the palace together. They chat, and consort Xian shares that she can understand everyone's thoughts except for what consort Chun truly desires. Throughout the year, consort Chun never attends the emperor's bedchamber, but she is always by the empress's side when needed. Consort Chun smiles in response and tells consort Xian that the one who is without desires is Consort Xian herself, as she only seems to care for the Emperor with no other desire for wealth or power. Linglung and Jixiang go to Noble Consort Gao's palace to deliver clothes. Linglung deliberately mentions the incident, when Yingluo previously claimed that the loquat leaves were poisonous. Upon hearing this, Noble Consort Gao's maid goes to the embroidery room, she makes up an excuse and brings Yingluo away to noble consort Gao's palace. 
Knowing that she may get in trouble, Yinglo pretends to stumble and speaks loudly, admitting that she said the loquat was poisonous. She speaks in a crazy manner and asks Noble Consort what she is eating. Seeing that she is mentally unstable, Noble Consort Gao believes she is not a threat and rewards her with dessert. Episode 5 Yingluo continues to act crazy. Noble Consort Gao cannot bear to watch anymore and sends her away. Noble Consort Gao later comments that the newly recruited maid is not good, but Consort Jia does not think so and suspects that Yingluo is just pretending. Yingluo then goes to visit Aunt Fong and deliberately spills the medicine on her body, hoping to search her room for any information related to her sister. However, Aunt Fong keeps a close eye on her and does not give her a chance to act. When Yinglo returns to the embroidery room, Auntie Zhang calls her aside and warns her to be careful, as there are rumors spreading that she is involved with a guard, and she is afraid that it will reach Chief Wu's ears. Late at night while everyone is asleep, Yingluo secretly sneaks out of her room. The bully notices and reports this to Aunt Fang. Aunt Fang instructs her to keep an eye on Yingluo. The bully watches Yingluo, hoping to find evidence of her secret meetings with a palace guard. However, she cannot find any solid proof. During a meal with the palace maids, Yingluo suddenly begins to vomit. Later, when measuring the waistlines of the maids, Yingluo's waist has expanded by an inch. The bully interprets these signs as Yingluo being pregnant and reports it to Aunt Fang. Aunt Fang goes to report to Chief Wu, with the bully as the witness. Yingluo firmly denies any misconduct or pregnancy. Chief Wu explains that falsely accusing someone will result in immediate expulsion from the palace. Yingluo agrees to let two palace matrons examine her for signs of pregnancy or any involvement with others. After the examination, Yinglo is proven innocent. Her enlarged belly is attributed to bloating, caused by lotus root powder dumplings. Chief Wu berates Aunt Fang for her wrongful actions, and both Aunt Fang and the bully try to shift the blame onto each other, desperately seeking mercy from Chief Wu. Chief Wu sentences the bully to 20 cane strikes and to be transferred to another area that performs arduous and lowly tasks, such as cleaning toilets. Aunt Fong receives the sentence of 40 cane strikes and expulsion from the palace. Before Aunt Fang leaves the palace, Yinglo goes to her room to confront her. Yinglo confesses that she deliberately schemed to make them believe she was pregnant. Aunt Fang berates her, likening her to her sister. Upon hearing this, Yinglo goes mad and interrogates Aunt Fang about her sister's true cause of death. Aunt Fang hastily claims that she had only taken Yinglu's sister's belongings after she passed, but genuinely did not know how she had died. She claims that her sister had changed her name from Yingning to Amen after entering the palace, and Aunt Fang warns Wei Yingluo never to mention her sister's name again. She had committed a grave scandal, and if Yingluo wants answers, she should ask Auntie Zhang. Episode 6 Upon learning that Auntie Zhang had been concealing information about her sister, Yingluo angrily went to confront her. Yingluo repeatedly pleaded with Auntie Zhang to tell her the truth. Eventually, Auntie Zhang revealed that Yingluo's sister had been found having relations with someone and was expelled from the palace, so she unalive herself due to shame. Yingluo refused to believe that her sister would unalive herself over such a matter, suspecting that there is more to the story. Yingluo then showed Auntie Zhang the pendant she found with her sister's belongings. Upon seeing the pendant, Auntie Zhang's face changed. After much hesitation, she revealed that the pendant belonged to Fu Heng. Faced with Auntie Zhang's persuasion, Yingluo made up her mind to uncover the truth and seek justice for her sister, no matter who was involved. Meanwhile, Lady Shu, in her attempt to attract the Emperor's attention, sang in a place the emperor would pass by. However, this only irritated the emperor, and she was punished to sing in the imperial garden for the entire night. To avoid favoritism, Consort Chun poured cold water on herself and became sick. When the emperor learned of her illness, he was in a good mood and decided to visit her. Upon his arrival, Consort Chun was in the middle of writing and immediately covered it up upon seeing the emperor. Taking the opportunity, 
Consort Chun tried to persuade the emperor to stand up for the empress and not indulge noble consort Gao too much, which displeased the emperor, who left on the spot. After the emperor left, the palace servants felt bad for Consort Chun, but she smiled. As Consort Chun had anticipated, the emperor went to see the empress. With her emotional burden lifted, the empress no longer treated the emperor as coldly as before and instead made efforts to reconcile with him. Later, the empress brought up the prevailing trend of extravagance and wastefulness in the palace, but the emperor remained noncommittal. Mingyu reminded the empress to give birth to another prince to solidify her position in the harem, and while the empress scolded her, she secretly agreed. After Yinglo discovered that the jade pendant belonged to Fu Heng, she began contemplating how to approach him. Auntie Zhang, recognizing Yinglu's exceptional embroidery skills, tried to give her every opportunity to shine, much to the envy of the other palace maids in the embroidery department. The Empress's birthday is coming up, and Auntie Zhang entrusted Yingluo with the peacock embroidery thread and instructed her to make a phoenix robe as a congratulatory gift for the Empress. She warned that if anything went wrong, their lives would be at stake. Upon seeing this, another maid, Linglong, schemed to steal the peacock embroidery thread. She tricked Jixiang, who was supposed to be watching over the peacock thread, to leave her post, which gives Linglong an opening to steal the peacock threads. The embroidery department then mysteriously caught fire. The phoenix robe prepared for the empress's birthday was damaged. Adding to that, the peacock embroidery thread also went missing. Everyone rejoiced at Ying Luo's misfortune, but she calmly stated that everyone would be implicated if something happened in the embroidery department, instilling fear in them. Despite feeling guilty for losing the peacock embroidery thread, Jixiang was surprised to find that Ying Luo wasn't bothered by it. Ying Luo tirelessly worked to salvage the phoenix robe, and everyone feared that her efforts would only lead to further trouble for herself. Ling Long took advantage of the situation to sow discord among the palace maids, suggesting that if anything went wrong, they should place all the blame on Ying Luo. On the day of the Empress's birthday, all the concubines presented their gifts to her. Noble consort, Gao deliberately gifted her a pure gold figure of the goddess of fertility, causing an awkward atmosphere. However, the empress remained composed and thanked noble consort Gao for her kindness. Ying Luo, holding the birthday gift, waited until everyone had finished presenting their gifts before entering the empress's chambers to offer her present. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe for more.